Hello everybody, it's Connie Stewart with SimplySimpleStamping.com. So glad you guys could join me tonight for my YouTube premiere. I think you're going to love tonight's project. This is called my tea tower. I think you can see we've got a pretty little tag up there at the top. My tea tower works like this. You simply fill this with 30 tea bags. The tea bags just pull out from the bottom. Guys, just in time for Mother's Day, this is going to make a great gift. I love to create these. They're very simple and uh, the measurements are actually pretty easy and I think you're going to like that too. Well, before we get started, I want to take a minute to kind of share how tonight's going to work. If you are on live with me right now, it is Wednesday, April 24th at 7 p.m. Central Time here in the United States. If you're live with me, I'm over in the chat room. There's a little chat box right over there to the right-hand side of your screen. I would love to chat with you during tonight's premiere. Guys, we do this every uh, about every other Wednesday. So much fun to just get on there, hear what you guys have to say, answer your questions. It's tons of fun. Now, in order to chat, one, you've got to be on live with me right now. Uh, you also have to be logged into your YouTube account. So... This will be a really good time to make sure you've gotten logged into your account so that we can chat. Now, if you are not on live with me, if you're watching the replay, well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Now, that doesn't mean we can't still talk. If you would like to leave me a comment here uh, on the video, you are welcome to leave a comment and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, but I am there. But if you're live, let's go have some fun over in the chat box. While I'm waiting for everyone to get on, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you as a subscriber. There's a great big red subscribe button. You kind of can't miss it. It's great big and it's red. Uh, click that subscribe button and then YouTube will let you know whenever I am back with a new video. And there's also a little bell up there in the corner. If you love to watch the live premieres and you don't want to miss the next one, click that bell and YouTube will send you a notification whenever I'm back live. And they'll also send you notifications whenever I'm back with a new video. The response to my written tutorials has been overwhelming. So if you're one that likes to have diagrams in front of you, you like to see everything, you like to read those step-by-step -step instructions, I will have um, a tutorial for you on the tea tower. You're going to be able to find that over at simplysimplestamping.com. So be sure to check that out and you can order your tutorial there. And I just want to say for those of you who are on live right now, listen, relax. Let's not worry about writing down measurements and scoring lines and all that. I just want you to have fun tonight. If you're over there in the chat box, I want to just be able to chat. The measurements for everything will be at simplysimplestamping.com tomorrow. So let's have some fun tonight and not worry about writing all that down, okay? I say we get started with our adorable little tea tower. Are you guys ready? I think you are. I'm gonna head over to uh, my stamp table so we can get started. Let's go. Let's start with that gorgeous designer series paper. This is kind of the star of the show. I really let the uh, designer series paper just be the be the star. It's absolutely beautiful. This is from the Petal Promenade collection. Um, I loved the deep colors, but I gotta tell you what I loved more than anything is it's an actual photograph. And I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. We're going to start with a piece that is five and three quarters by 12. And then we will cut those pieces down into two different sizes. This is two and three quarters inch by five and three quarters. This is two and one quarter inch by five and three quarters. And yes, we have two of each. And I thought the Blackberry Bliss just looked gorgeous with that paper. So I'm going to start with a piece of eight and a half by 11 Blackberry Bliss. I have a piece that is five and a half inches by six inches and a piece that is one inch by six inches. For my tag, I'm going to use the powder pink uh, cardstock. This is cut three inches by one and a half inches. And then my tag itself will be on Whisper White two and three quarters by one and a quarter inch. Mm. Every box deserves to be tied up in some pretty ribbon. And I thought this shimmer ribbon in the powder pink looked very nice. Any ribbon's going to do. Again, I just thought it lent itself very nicely with that designer series paper. All right, we need to fill our tea tower with tea. 
Um, I found that the Twinnings and the Bigelow, uh, Tezo, and Trader Joe's, all those sizes work really well. It is about a two and three quarter by three inch tea bag. So if you'll just kind of look and make sure your tea bag runs about that size, it's meant to fit into this box. Now, this part is very important. You do want to make sure these are individually wrapped. It usually will say right here, individually wrapped on the box. So make sure you look for that. Um, I will tell you for tonight, um, I use the Darjeeling because the purple went so well with my Blackberry Bliss cardstock. But I wanted to show you both boxes. Uh, Twinnings has a ton of flavors, just a ton. And so you can kind of gear your tea tower to your tea. Ha, huh, kind of fun. So make sure when you go to your grocery store that you look for all the different um, color options and flavor options that are available because that's what makes it fun. You can also mix and match. Um, it's going to take about 30 tea bags, maybe about 35 to fill um, your tea tower. All right, we're ready to create our box. I have got my Blackberry Bliss. Remember that was eight and a half by 11. So a standard piece here in the US. Um, I've got the eight and a half inch side up here at the top. Let's score that at two and a half inches. I'm now going to rotate it around so that the 11 inch side is here at the top. We're going to score at three inches, five and a half inches, and eight and a half inches. The scoring on that piece is done. Let's bring in um, that little strip. Remember, this was the one by six inch. We're going to score that at half an inch. That's ready to go. Now, for our last one, for our lid, you're going to want to bring in your box maker shim. Guys, if you've not seen um, the video on the box maker shim, um, I'm going to have that available for you there at simplysimplestamping.com. But what this little shim does is it's going to allow box and lid to go together nicely. So you're not trying to squish the box to get the lid to work. This bumps out my cardstock just a little bit. So we're gonna attach our shim. We're going to take our five and a half by six inch Blackberry Bliss. We're going to score at one and a half inches on all four sides. Remember, we do wanna make sure that the shim is laying as flat as it can here. And we don't want our cardstock to accidentally slide underneath it, although it usually doesn't. I always just like to give you that little warning, make sure it doesn't slide under. One and a half inches on all four sides. All right, we need to do some prep work to um, all of our pieces. So I'm gonna start with this strip because that's the easy one. We're going to come in with our bone folder and give that a nice crease. And then what I want you to do here is just snip off at an angle like so. Uh, this is just so we don't kind of get that little extra bulk in there. And we'll snip off that end. It's not going to show, don't worry about being perfect. That piece is prepped. Now let's work on our lid. And for this one, I'm going to cut along each of these score lines, all four of them. So you can see those are cut. We now need to miter. Um, I just find that boxes and lids and things go together together better when I do. And I want you to notice, you just cut from the inside to the outside. Cut off a piece of pie or a piece of pizza, whichever is your favorite. And you can see we're just kind of getting a little bulk. Let me show you what that does. Because if you're not familiar with box making, you may be wondering why I'm doing that. When I bring these corners together, I want this to lay nicely here on the side. Let me show you what happens if you don't do that. If I were to just fold that over, can you see? We see that lip. Well, that's what we're avoiding when we cut that off and we miter it. That's why I love to miter boxes. Now you can see I've done this one. Let me get the other three. And I want you to notice you don't have to cut a lot off. They're not large pieces that I'm mitering. But like I said, we're just kind of getting some of that bulk off of there so that our box looks pretty. All right, the lid is done. Let me uh, now work on the box itself. And this one's actually going to be a little bit different, but we do want to cut up on these score lines. This is here on that uh, two and a half inch panel. And we're going to just cut up the score lines to 
the other score line. Very, very simple. We'll just cut that one. I've got one more here. I'm going to come in with my bone folder and I wanna give everything a nice crease. I really, really recommend using a bone folder when it comes to boxes. We don't want these, uh, these corners to be soft. We want them to be nice, harsh. I know that's probably not the best word to describe it, but we do like these to be really nice and crisp, you know? It's gotta look like a box. So, all right, I have that all nice and creased. Now, I want you to notice we have a three inch panel, a two and a half inch panel, a three inch panel, and a two and a half inch panel. We want to take this two and a half inch panel and through the magic of television, um, we took one of those flaps and you can see I just cut it off. Don't have to be neat about it, don't worry, this is all gonna go, but I do need to cut off some of that bulk and remember that is on a two and a half inch panel. Now, I'm gonna flip this over because I now need to come in with my designer series paper and we can now add our designer series paper onto each of those panels. And we do wanna do that before we go any further. So I'm gonna take just a moment. You can adhere these several different ways. You can use your snail or your multi-purpose glue. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and be using my multi-purpose glue tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my glue now I'm gonna take a moment and adhere all these down. I do like working with my multi-purpose glue because it just gives me some really nice control. If I started to put something on crooked, I still have the ability to move it around. But I do wanna tell you, less is more. We don't have to go crazy. I like to leave the tip of the bottle touching the paper. I do wanna make sure I get my glue up on the sides and in the corners because I don't want it lifting at all. But I just want you to see, you don't have to add a lot of glue. And also we don't want it oozing out the sides. So I always say less is more. All right, we're now going to come in with our two and a quarter inch circle punch so that we can cut our little notch here because that's where our T is going to come out. Now, remember we had you, I had you cut this off. I'm actually going to have you just do a quick little miter, kind of like what we did before. But I'm doing that so that I have room for my punch. So I wanna push these flaps out of the way. I'm not going to be cutting on them, but I do want them out of the way. You notice I'm leaving that flap down. All right, I need a little halfway point here. And guys, you really can eyeball it. You're gonna see the edge of your designer series paper and the edge of your designer series paper right there. Line that up. When you're good, give it a punch. There is our notch. Let's take care of this mess. Now, yes, we need to cut this off, but what I found was my tea bags are almost a little too big. I actually am going to need to cut a little notch here and here. And guys, I'm simply going to cut, oh, I don't know, I've got a, maybe about three quarters of an inch right there. And we're gonna snip this away. Hopefully you can see that I'm gonna bring in some white paper so that you can see that yes, I just cut just a little notch. Let me repeat that over here. There we go, that worked great. All right, we're now going to take that strip this is what's gonna hold our box together. And we're going to adhere. You notice the seam, the score line is facing out. You can adhere it on either side, whichever one, but I'm going to do that with my multi-purpose glue. You can also use tear and tape. That will work great as well. So let's go ahead and get our multi-purpose glue here on the side. Remember, less is more. The key here is the strength. We need something very, very strong because gravity is going to wanna to work against us. But as I said, tear and tape is going to work wonderful as well. I just thought I have my multi-purpose glue out, why not use it? Okay, I'm now going to fold this over. I'm going to lay my adhesive here, my glue, and then I'm just going to bring that flap right on top. So again, just here on the flap, I can bring this flap over Give that a press, and you can see we've now created our box. All right, 
I'm gonna just give this a nice little back rub. I wanna make sure we're all good and ready to go. I'm gonna set that aside to dry for just a minute because I want that seam to get good and uh, dry. Let me go ahead and work on the lid while we're letting that dry. I want you to notice on my original, I left the lid plain. But hey, it is a video. I wanna show you another option. I wanna show you what it would look like if we emboss this in our die cutting machine. Now we have a lot of different embossing folders you can choose from, but you are going to need to pick one that is at least six by six because some of ours are gonna to be too small and it's not going to work. So you're gonna to need to choose one of these larger ones. I chose the subtle. I just, this is one of my favorites. Oh, I want you to notice, I did use my bone folder and I've scored and creased all of my score lines. You want to do that before you emboss. That is important. Let's lay that in there. I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. And I hope you can see, do you see that beautiful texture it gives my box or my lid, I should say? I just think it kind of dresses it up. But I wanted you to just have options. If you have um, the embossing folders, I think it's a really nice touch. All right. We're ready to put this together and uh, we're gonna add some glue here. On all four tabs, you wanna pay close attention right up to that seam. And then of course down here at the bottom. Uh, again, snail is not going to work on these tabs because gravity is working against us. So tear and tape is your other uh, adhesive of choice on this one. But like I said, we were using the multi-purpose glue anyway, so we're gonna go with it. All right, there is my last tab. Let's start with the first one. We're going to bring it around. Remember, I kind of showed you this earlier in the video. Give that a press. I'll do my next one. Just line up those corners. That part's really important that you line up those corners well. Let's get this one. Just make sure you've got them lined up. This is the other reason I really like to work with that multi-purpose glue because I have the ability to move it, at least for a few seconds anyway, I can move it around. All right, fingers inside the box and giving that a nice back rub. Our lid to our box is done. All right, so the box should be good and dry. And yes, it's feeling good and sturdy. We need to put box together. And to do that, you notice we have two bigger flaps and a smaller flap. We're going to bring in a large, we're going to bring in a small, and then we're going to bring in a large, okay? That way it looks pretty, all right? So to do that, just like we have, let's add on that middle flap, the smaller one. I don't have to go crazy. This is really just kind of a, this is an inside piece. You're going to line it up on both sides, let me give that a press. That's what's nice about that opening is I have that ability. All right, now for our last one, we're going to bring it over, but I do wanna make sure I get my adhesive all the way around. So I'm gonna pay close attention to the edges, and now we can bring that around. We wanna make sure everything is centered up Give that a press. You know what, I can even come in with my bone folder inside the box. I wanna make sure all those corners, that's what's great about this point. I can get into the corners and the sides, making sure everything is nicely glued. And now I just wanna verify that my lid fits and it does. I love the texture. I think that looks really, really nice. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and fill our box with our tea. A little hint for you. I find it best if you'll rotate these around. They'll just go in a little bit better. And so we're gonna start with just a few to get us going here. Put them into the box and let them kind of go in flat. Now you can kind of see where they can just take a tea bag here from the bottom. Now we're going to keep adding our tea bags. All right, there's my 30 tea bags in the box. I can add my lid. Let's do just a little decoration. 
so we'll be stamping here um, on this little strip of white, but you know what? I wanted to decorate it a little bit. Let's come in with the detailed trio punch because I think this one is so sweet and it gives it this softness. Uh, originally, when I created it, I did not use this and I thought, man, it just needs something. So I'm sliding that little piece of cardstock in there. I'm making sure it's pushed all the way up to the top and all the way over to the side. And you can see we're gonna give those two little punches. Now, I also wanted to soften it up by corner rounding. And hey, I have a built-in corner rounder too. Let's come in with that. Same thing, making sure it's pushed all the way on both sides. You'll feel it, trust me, you'll feel it that it's in there. We'll get that end. Let's get the opposite end as well. I gotta tell you, I think it's one of the best corner rounders Stampin' Up! has ever come out with. Now we're going to take our powder pink and we're just gonna corner round this piece. And we'll do that on all four sides. All right, to do my stamping, I am going to bring in my uh, Stampin' Pierce mat. And the reason why, I'm going to be using the Time for Tea stamp set for my sentiment. I loved the You Fill My Cup With Happiness. Of course, it fit my tea theme beautifully. So I decided to go with that one. If you have a different sentiment that you like, feel free to use it. I'm going to use uh, my Blackberry Bliss ink because, you know, it goes with my paper. We're going to now stamp this right off to the left side of my punched area. And there we go. All right, we're now going to adhere this onto our powder pink. And I wanted to use dimensionals. Again, I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again. I think dimension just makes everything look better. We're just gonna use four dimensionals here. I've removed the backings and now we can add that here to our powder pink. Very sweet, this. Oh my, it was driving me crazy. It was a little, it was a little blank. Let me tell you how we're gonna just dress things up. How about some pearls? I thought pearls, it just, it just looks so nice. And we're just gonna fill that in with one of our large pearls. These are adhesive backs, so they're really nice. Add that right there. I'm going to take that ribbon and I gave you plenty to work with. I wanted you to have plenty so you weren't fighting with it. We're just gonna tie it here in a bow up at the top. And I'm going to actually adhere this with some multi-purpose glue. Just here at one end, because I do want it to kind of hang off the end. And there you go, a wonderful gift, maybe for somebody who's maybe had some surgery. Of course, Mother's Day, it's perfect. Now remember too, when it comes to this gift, it is refillable. They can simply just slide off this ribbon and refill it with more tea bags. So it is a gift that will just keep on giving. This Petal Promenade Designer Series paper, well, from the moment it came out, it knocked my socks off. And of course, it will be retiring here um, at the end of May or while supplies last. So I'm kind of sad to see it go, but it was really nice to be able to use it on this project. I think this new type of Designer Series paper that Stampin' Up! is offering, where it's an actual photograph, is gorgeous. Obviously, any designer series paper is gonna work, right? I know you have a lot of it. I know you do, because you hoard it like I do. But I do wanna give you a little tip when it comes to using this type of photographed designer series paper. <sighs> I went round and round trying to decorate this. It needs more stamping. Let me put the little teacup on it. Let me do this. Everything I tried, it was like, it's not working. It's too much, it's too much. Simple was best. Clean and simple, the little tag. Every time I tried to do more, it was just overpowering that beautiful paper. So that's why when I said at the beginning of the video, I'm letting the paper be the star of this project, do that. Now, if you're using a more simple design of designer series paper, you may wanna dress up the front of this a little bit more. You might wanna put your uh, sentiment here on the front. You may wanna add another piece of ribbon around the box. Get a little creative with that, but I just wanted to share with you why I did so little stamping on this project. Less was more. Now, I told you at the beginning that I would have all the measurements available for you. Here's where you can find those. Tomorrow, Thursday, April 25th, 
over at simplysimplestamping.com. I'm going to have all the information there for you. So you'll be able to grab the measurements or if you're more of a tutorial person, you like to have that tutorial in front of you, the tutorial will be available for purchase as well. And you can order that. Just look up in the menu bar for the uh, videos and tutorials. Click on it and you can order that. No matter where you live, United States or outside of the US, you can order the tutorial there. But like I said, all the information, photographs of tonight's projects, everything that you need. And if you'd like to order any of the supplies that you need to create the project, that's available there for you too. So easy, you guys. Find the supply list with all those great photos, click a pick, boom, you can place the order for anything you need. I cannot recommend that paper highly enough too. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And don't forget to pick up that shimmer ribbon. Um, I just think that powder pink, which will also be leaving us at the end of May, it really ties and softens that Blackberry Bliss. I think it is really, really nice. So yeah, head over to simplysimplestamping.com tomorrow morning and you'll be able to find all the details about today's project. Thank you guys so much for being a part of tonight's YouTube premiere. Be sure to mark your calendars for my next one. That'll be on May 15th, 2019, 7 p.m. Central Time. I will be back with new projects for you. What will they be? I don't know, because I haven't designed them yet. But you can bet now that this one is done, I'm going to be back in my stamp room working on some great inspiration to share with you again Wednesday, May 15th. So be sure to mark your calendars. Hey, guys, thank you so much. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed tonight's YouTube premiere. I always appreciate that. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can get updates whenever I'm back with new videos. Remember, it's free. Not much is free these days. Click subscribe. Become a subscriber of my channel. Have a great night, my friends, and we'll see you soon. Bye.